work on uh, catalytic antibodies. Um, antibodies are uh, now pretty much accepted as uh, magic bullets because of their specificity of binding to individual target antigens. And um, we are interested in getting a, a second generation, a better form of antibodies for treatment of intractable diseases, such as Alzheimer's therapy. And we are also interested in HIV. And, and the catalytic function, we think, can enhance the, the efficacy and perhaps also the safety of antibody treatments. Um, so I wanted to give you a very brief overview of the field, because I'm not entirely certain whether this is common knowledge, the things I have to say to you today. Uh, so I discovered naturally occurring proteolytic antibodies about 20 years ago now, and it's been slow going. But even slower going has been engineered catalytic antibodies, which were first uh, mentioned by Linus Pauling way back. And, and uh, some progress has occurred. But in general, it's difficult to combine high affinity binding and uh, the catalytic function, the reuse function. And this may be intrinsic to protein structure. It may require uh, millions of years of evolution to do it. But so we, we are accepting the difficulty and we, we isolate uh, antibodies from, uh, from humans and from animals. And we do try to engineer improved versions of the antibodies. Uh, the, the, the natural occurrence of the antibodies has now been reproduced in many different laboratories around the world. They are generally found uh, against autoantigens. So it seems dysfunctional immunity favors the emergence of the catalytic function. B cell superantigens also we've discovered quite recently that microbial B cell superantigens are susceptible to uh, catalytic antibodies. And it turns out that um, catalysis is really an innate function of antibodies that we express right in our germline gene encoded antibodies. Whereas, remember, the, the, the so called magic bullet aspect of antibodies is really derived adaptively within the lifetime of the organi organism, either after exposure to the, to the infection or by immunization of animals. So we found that it's innate. It turns out that autoantibodies are generally more catalytic. And then we think that uh, immunization with certain chemical analogs, um, covalent immunization as we call it, these analogs bind the B cells, the B lymphocytes that produce the antibodies covalently, that this can be utilized to overcome the natural prohibition on development of catalysis in, in antibodies as a course in the course of infections. So the mechanism, uh, it turns out uh, all of the proteolytic antibodies that have been described are of the serine protease kind, example of, of convergent evolution, if you will, where the classical enzymes and antibodies have a similar active site. Uh, the reason there is great interest, despite many failures in the field, in these antibodies is because a single catalyst molecule can turn over literally thousands of, of, any, of, of target molecules over its half-life, whereas conventional binding by antibodies is a stoichiometric one-to-one -one phenomenon. So now on to the subject of my uh, talk today. Uh, catalytic immunity to amyloid beta peptide, we think, is beneficial. And this is, of course, to the extent that amyloid beta peptide itself is a bad peptide. It's, it's an autoantigen. We all make it. There is no known uh, useful function of a beta amyloid peptide. Uh, its accumulation in the brain with age and in Alzheimer's disease. Yeah, there is no known physiological function, and, and, and for the purposes of this talk, I'm going to accept that uh, A beta, in fact, is a, is a, is a, is a major factor uh, as a, in the neurodegeneration found in Alzheimer's. Um, there is controversy about the subject, but there's also a lot of evidence 
from both transgenic mouse models and in human populations that a beta is simply not diagnostic of Alzheimer's disease, but that it actually causes bad effects. So the peptide is a is a is the transmembrane region of the precursor protein expressed on the cell surface, and uh, secretases. Uh, there's a series of secretases that digest the protein, and in the end, uh, uh, a beta is released. The oligomers of a beta are thought to be the toxic species, uh, not these large plaques that are diagnostic of the disease. This is just an atomic force microscope picture of fibrils, large uh, fibrils, and then these oligomers, which are generally composed of uh, four molecules up to uh, 12 molecules or so. So immunotherapy of um, uh, Alzheimer's disease is currently under clinical trials by several companies, Elan, Wyeth, and uh, Baxter, um, and also Lilly. They are testing peripheral uh, injection, intravenous injection of antibodies to A beta for treatment of AD. Uh, the preliminary results, so the mouse results are wonderful. Cognitive improvement occurs with these antibodies. These are conventional antibodies that bind A beta. But in humans, the phase two trials um, are somewhat mixed. There is improvement in, in cognition in a subset of patients who are ApoE4 allele non-carriers. And in the phase three trials, Elan and Wyeth have now set up separate groups. Uh, there is a tendency for improvement in cognition even overall, but it turns out that the ApoE4 negative uh, patients are uh, are responding better to the intravenous antibody therapy. Uh, regrettably, there is um, there are safety issues also. A vasogenic edema, something that Ilan and Wyatt say is due to leakage of, of um, small amounts of blood, microbleeds, uh, due to antibody treatment. That has been noted. And um, there is also some concern about uh, Inflammation, immune complex uh, activation of inflammation uh, due to their interaction with microglia. Uh, I should mention in my previous slide that Baxter is testing polyclonal antibodies, pooled antibodies, uh, IVIG is what uh, we call them, uh, mixed from uh, thousands of uh, donors, and uh, they, are, they are reporting not statistically significant, but a tendency towards improvement in their own phase two trials uh, in, in uh, using this IVIG, intravenous immunoglobulin polyclonal antibodies. And the Elan Wyeth antibody is a monoclonal antibody to the peptide. So, what is the mechanism by which this, this uh, therapy is supposed to work? The antibody is infused into the blood. Uh, the, uh, the blood-brain barrier is not completely intact in AD, in, in Alzheimer's disease, and small amounts, about 0.01% of antibody IgG form, are thought to get into the brain. Uh, immune complexes then bind to the microglia. Regrettably, the microglia also release inflammatory mediators. So there is A beta clearance because of ingestion of these immune complexes there's also the danger of inflammation. Also, clearance of a beta from the parenchyma is uh, accompanied by accumulation of a beta in the, in the blood vessels. And this is thought to be the reason why uh, the microbleeds can occur. So, what uh, why are catalysts of, of interest for this? One, because of efficacy, the greater amount of clearance because of the catalytic function. And then also, catalysts do not form stable immune complexes, and therefore these safety problems, in theory, should be minimal. <coughs> 